Hey, so welcome, uh, welcome to my live event. Um, I scheduled uh, an event, and uh, I obviously don't have it figured out because I was actually trying to trying to uh, launch the one that I scheduled, and so that didn't work out. But uh, but here I am anyway, and um, so uh, it looks like uh, it looks like we're good to go. We're live, and so um, just gonna find that over here. And I'll grab the uh, I'll grab the chat so I can see if somebody pops in here. Um, all right, so I'm going to get started on this, and uh, I will. Um, uh, let's see, live chat. All right. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, last, um, this is where we left off last time, and uh, 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 Deb McDonald uh, actually sent me a suggestion. She said, Dennis, it'd be really nice if, uh, if we could actually see you mixing color. So, um, so I figured out uh, uh, a method that I can do that. I've never, I've never worked on a palette vertically, but um, it can't be that difficult. So. Uh, so I'll give that a shot. And um, uh, there, were, there were a couple of uh, lines that I noticed. The, the interesting thing um, about sitting in the, uh, uh, in the studio this close to a larger painting is, uh, you know, when I'm in the field, I have this opportunity to step back a lot and actually take a look at what I'm painting and, and step in. As a matter of fact, I usually wear a path in the ground and, and, and sometimes I'm after four hours of that, I'm so exhausted I collapse when I get home. But, um, but anyway, here you're so close to it. There are some things you can't see until you actually get up and and step away and uh, and have a look there. So, um, there were just a just a couple lines that uh, that needed to be corrected from last time, and um, we're just going to mix a little bit of a, a little bit of a gray here. So uh, it's going to be kind of light. So I'm just taking some cat orange and uh, and some uh, ultramarine blue, um, just to get kind of a light color here. Just a light, a light gray. Um, this line up here actually needed to be uh, just a little bit more, a little bit more like this. It was either change this one or change that one, and so I think this is the right one to change. So I'm going to actually pull this one in here. And then um, this one seems okay. Uh, I'll just make these couple of a uh, couple of drawing corrections, and then we can uh, hopefully cover some pretty decent ground in the uh, in the hour that we have here. So, uh, and then there were a couple of a couple of lines down below <clears throat> that also needed. Uh, needed some adjustment in there. That has a, a, a just a touch of yellow in it, and uh, we're just gonna use that for now. Uh, we're just gonna lay that in here, and this one here specifically um, actually needed to uh, to come from here and, and rise up a little bit, so, so that it comes kind of up to a little bit of a higher point right here on this corner. Um, And it's down here somewhere, but there's quite a bit of rust. I did make myself a uh, uh, a copy of my photograph this time, so I've got that over here where I can where I can reference it really quickly. And uh, there's just some of these uh, some of these colors uh, that are just right in here. Um, a little bit a little bit yellow, and then uh, and then there's the, they cool off a little bit when we get back. Uh, back here, so I'm just going to touch a bit of blue and uh, mix that in as well. Um, and uh, we can't see a whole lot. We can see the white kind of in here. 
and uh, this line actually looks fairly good. We're going to bring it up just slightly here. Some of these blues were in here. That feels better. Um, <clears throat> this um, top part of the uh, the barn right here is really is like really light, uh, very highlighted, um, and uh, because it's really one of the few things that's catching a whole lot of uh, whole lot of light. So by the time we get this this value adjusted correctly, um, it's going to be pretty light. But I don't want to I don't want to throw this in right away um, because I want to get these parts of the barn established um, before that. <clears throat> now this part over here is actually in shadow, um, so I'm going to actually take a little bit more blue. Um, and I'm going to warm it up just a touch so it's going to go a little bit green on us, which is okay. And, um, and we're going to lay that in here as well. Uh, I'm sort of creating this, uh, this light, this drama. Uh, the, the light, when I took the photograph, um, it was actually really flat, uh, really flat light out. And uh, it was definitely not as interesting as it needed to be or that or as interesting as I'm hoping to make it so um, anyway uh, so we'll just throw some of this color in here just to get that side down um, all right and then we'll get some of these rusty colors uh, we'll take some cat orange um, we're gonna mix a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson with that um, and then we'll take some uh, some of this cad yellow mix that in there we might have to blue that down a bit <clears throat> so this will just be kind of uh, uh, sort of a one of the darker tones and then we'll come back with uh, with some of the lighter tones in here and um, this is where the uh, the rust and the in the water uh, and stuff just kind of has created quite a bit of rust on the side of this building here but I think it's more from the water. Uh, the ground was actually has an awful lot of clay in it, and I think maybe the water was coming off the roof and probably uh, splashing on the ground and kicking the, the clay up. Uh, or um, this may have been a place where the, uh, where the cows like to hang out or something like that. So um, that's not quite as orange as I would like it. So I'm just gonna add a little more in there. Uh, Looking for some irregular shapes. Um, and there's just a little bit right in here. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but I actually went down here to get some paint when it's actually up here now. So that's kind of funny. Uh, a little more yellow in this maybe. Uh, all right. Um, all right. So that's the tree. Throw some of this in. Now I want to mix this uh, uh, this color that's in here, and one of the darkest things I can see, and I'll just start with some. Uh, this is a, a cobalt blue hue, uh, which works really good for mixing mixing darks. Um, so I've got this blue 
and I'm gonna I'm just gonna gray it just a little bit with just a touch of orange uh, and then I may just lighten it just a little bit so right underneath this uh, uh, this awning right here is actually one of the darkest things I can see in the whole painting so um, this is a uh, kind of what I tend to do when I start approaching the uh, the midpoint of a painting is I, is I, I try and get that kind of that darkest value um, that's visible to me established because then I can start drawing these correlations between between the darkest darks and the lightest lights and like I mentioned a, a minute ago I'm trying to hang on to getting this really light until I see what this particular contrast is actually going to look like so but then this um, this gray we can go into that and uh, and start to put some of this into the barn, uh, kind of in this area, because um, it's pretty dark and pretty dark in here as well. And then I'm going to go actually make that a little bit darker over here. And uh, a little too much. Uh, not, but lay some of these uh, darks in here as well. Now the reason I made that kind of a warm, uh, a warmer, uh, let me say that differently. <laughs> the reason I made that a cooler uh, uh, gray is because I'm trying to, um, keep a separation here between these two, this still being the darkest, uh, but this far shadow here is gonna be quite a bit cooler than, uh, than when we get out here where we can actually see more reflective light and stuff. Uh, so I'll just lay this in here. And the interesting thing about uh, barns of this type is that, um, you know, they're built of all these vertical panels. So some of this uh, things that are that happen naturally um, actually work out in your favor because uh, you just kind of end up with some of these really nice vertical uh, strokes that remain there. Um, I want to double check this line here against this these. That looks pretty good. Um, and that, uh, pretty much that same highlight, uh, same highlight, that same uh, uh, shadow is actually, uh, actually lives right underneath um, these eaves, so. So let me get a little thinner here. Let's lay this in here. All right, that's the line. That line has got to rise up just a little bit right here. So, and that'll be uh, that'll be good for now. Um, and then we end up with a uh, similar situation over here. Um, I'm trying to see that. Yeah, you can see this pretty good. It looks like uh, without any trouble. Um, uh, Deb G, nice to see you. Larry, <laughs> dude, I'm worried about you with, uh, uh, with those snakes in your pond. Um, Larry had a, uh, a video the other day where he was cleaning out his pond in Florida. I mean, I'm from Florida. When I go there, I just assume that every snake can kill me. So, um, the, uh, while he was cleaning out his pond, uh, uh a really large snake actually came down a hill and messed around in a pool of water 
and then actually went into the pond that he was cleaning out. So I was concerned for you, Larry, but I'm glad uh, I'm glad that you're living through that. Um, all right. Um, so this uh, this dark here um, is actually the same as this pretty pretty close to the same as this one over here. So uh, we'll just drop this in because we have the same overhang uh, right in here, and then uh, and then we'll go back to this kind of greenish gray, and then we'll drop that drop that in here. And all of these lines are going to be refined um, and stuff as we move along through the different stages of the painting. So I don't get too concerned about um, about playing in, inside the lines, so to speak. So, uh, and this uh, this actually takes on a little bit more. Um, I'm going to take this gray here. It actually takes on a little more green. So I'm going to add. Just, I mean, you have to be careful with Viridian because um, it can take over your life. So uh, just a little tiny uh, dab will do you on that because um, that color, uh, Brian Smith one time said uh, he put some on his palette and when he came, uh, when he came back from painting, he had it behind his ear and like all over him. And um, yeah, yeah, that, that color is to be, to be, uh, yeah, I keep it up there in the corner. Um, and uh, touch it lightly. So, but I want to add, I want to add just a little bit of green and I may warm, warm this up a little bit as we get out in here. Um, but there are quite a bit of, uh, there's quite a bit of green in this wood. So we'll come in here and uh, grab some of that. I'm gonna get just a little more, and if I just touch that, can get some green. Just touch the cat a little bit, got a little green. I'll just lay that in here. I also added some uh, added some thinner, so um, and I'm just going to scrub this in kind of lightly. we get to this uh, corner here. Things are gonna are gonna lighten up just a little bit so and that falls right under here. So now I'm correcting this. Uh, this overhang is the same as that overhang. So I had it pretty far back here to start with. You can see my line. So I'm just making a little correction there. And then on this, uh, on the corner, uh, on the corner here, that this is going to actually be. Um, lighter because I'm, there's going to be a lot more light hitting this uh, this side of the barn and um, this area right here is really kind of my uh, my central focal point so I'll be working to uh, to retain this um, the interest level in here it'll have a higher contrast and um, uh, w which in most cases that's going to mean some brighter highlights and and things like that so um, so this line is actually going to go all the way up to that corner and then down and so we're going to move uh, we're going to move this over here and what, what I hope you what I hope you can see um, in this particular stage and, and you know the question came up this week about about you know learning how to paint uh, I believe it was Dominique uh, was saying that um, you know learning what to do in this middle part of the painting is uh, something that it's not really talked about a lot and, and uh, the more I thought about it um, you know 
know, the more that's, that's actually, it's actually pretty true is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't talk about the center part of the, uh, of the whole process, but, um, really once I get past that first stage of just getting the majority of the uh, canvas covered, you know, the next thing for me is to, um, you know, start because I do that with some sense of value. So I'm, I'm trying to get color, but you know, it, this one started out pretty, uh, Cezanne looking color and, uh, and, and that's fine. Cause I'm just trying to get the canvas covered in a general, um, in a general range, but I'm also thinking about, um, uh, hey, painterly brushes, nice to see you. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, uh, value and and stuff at that point. So I'm just trying to establish that as I go along, and I, and you just keep you just keep tweaking it through this middle stage. And what I'm really trying to go for is is get the darkest dark in and get the lightest light because that establishes the whole value range. And once you get that down, you know that everything else lives. In between there and you can start applying your rules you know your rules about um, you know the sky is typically the lightest thing and then um, flat planes are next uh, as far as being the next lightest angles are uh, are the next and then verticals uh, because they're ca catching less light um, become uh, become a lot darker so all right uh, I don't know why I talk so much I'm supposed to be painting but uh, I will, uh, I will get back to that. Um, this this one back here because it's sort of sort of hiding behind these trees. Um, it's a little bit darker, uh, so we'll just go back with some of this cobalt uh, blue, and we'll actually mix a little alizarin with that. And I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take some uh, cad yellow and put that in there, and uh, just want to get. See how that compares, and uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So um, this is just to get this part started, and it's going to be a little bit darker because the light's being filtered by uh, these trees and things that are that are out in front here. So and I'm going to just. Did it again I'm trying to go over here for paint when it's up here uh, that'll, that'll take me a while to figure that out but uh, I'll get it um, Somebody asked me, uh, asked me earlier today, uh, you know, what's your goal for tonight? And uh, I really don't have one, so uh, I, I didn't, I'm not really thinking about these particular sessions in terms of, you know, I want to get to a certain point uh, by here or, or uh, you know, tonight I want to get this accomplished or whatever. I'm really thinking more in terms of uh, just making sure that you can get a, a nice picture uh, of what of what my process is so um, so that's kind of the whole that's kind of the whole goal here uh, and hopefully um, hopefully you, you also um, can learn something um, along the way and that you know that by stopping by and, and uh, checking this out and um, just as you know, uh, I think maybe it was Stephen who pointed out that I had a couple lines that were off, and he was absolutely right. And uh, you know, this is well, you, you know, my channel. We we journey together here. We all learn at the same uh, at the same time. I learn from you. You learn from me, and uh, and that's uh, a beautiful thing. So, um, all right. Um, so I think I think these these values are not too bad. Now I think I can actually sort of. A, start to think about what does this look like but before I do that 
Um, I want to get these trees with their primary trunks in uh, before I uh, before I tack the sky. Otherwise, um, this is still a little bit a little bit wet from last week, so it's not completely dry. Um, if it was, by the way, um, the way I would deal with that is I'd actually put some uh, retouch varnish over this, and then I would go right back over top of that. Uh, with uh, fresh paint that's kind of how I would uh, kind of how I would handle that process so um, this uh, this particular uh, groundwork and stuff is not working out to be uh, the type of clay that I that I wanted but that but that's okay we'll correct that as well as we go and, and here I'm just again going for uh, one of the darkest colors I can I can make and I just want to put this in because this this little uh, thing that runs across here at a little bit of an angle has a little break in it it's a pretty dark color and it and it and it's got a lot of uh, a lot of violet in it so I just sort of mixed a violet and I think it's probably something to uh, to prevent some erosion and then there's another uh, there's kind of another one down in here um, that runs a little bit this way and uh, and then okay now I'll take a I'll take a stab at the uh, at these trees and again I'm gonna mix a uh, I'm gonna mix a gray and I'm gonna start with uh, with cat orange again and uh, and uh, this time I'll go for uh, So that's cat orange and uh, ultramarine blue and just to test it I'm going to see what that so I've basically got a kind of a warm a warm gray here uh, you can see it's a lot warmer than what we're working with down here when I when I put these colors in here which is good it's kind of what I'm going for um, I, maybe I'll cool it off just a little bit um, but I don't want to get too uh, too cool and I'm going to add a little bit of green into that um, because I'm painting a tree and this this tree's got some uh, some green in it but uh, this is the largest the largest tree here that we can see and I'll come back with the with the highlights but for now I'm going to go ahead and paint uh, probably going to end up with some counter changes in here uh, because I'm going to have the uh, light side of the tree against this kind of dark area um, here, which is going to work out really well. But then over here, um, I'm going to have the dark side of the tree against this part, uh, which is going to have to be a little bit lighter so that these these uh, values read OK. Um, so let's just quickly uh, quickly get these in here. Um, so this is typically what I do. I just drag, I just kind of drag the brush. And, and as I drag it, I, I tend to rotate it a little bit. Um, without trying to be too too careful with it um, and then over here we can just establish this let me get this side in here and if you want to paint without real smooth edges uh, switch the uh, brush to your hand that you don't write with and <laughs> you'll have no problem uh, keeping uh, keeping loose edges so um, All right, so uh, this part, let's get a little more of that. This part of the tree comes down into here. Let me transition a little bit too fast. Um, and this one comes out down into here. There's another kind of major part of the trunk that's right here, uh, right down in here. So just kind of pull that in there. And, um, as uh, as trees get close to the ground, they uh, they as their roots go out, they create sort of a mounding effect. And if you wanna um, if you want your trees to look like they're they've been there a long time, that's a really good thing to do is just kind of create that mound uh, 
that mound. All right. So let's uh, let's mix some more of that. So we're gonna take cat orange again, and we'll grab some ultramarine uh, blue with that, and. Um, This branch here uh, kind of comes off this way. And we'll work on these details out here later. Um, right now, it's just the, just these primary branches. Um, and I only need, I just need a few to get, to kind of get things rolling here. Um, here and this one works its way off of here and this one kind of comes up a little straighter changes direction there and this one works off of here going to have these overlap without going off that corner there. And what will happen here as we, as we move along is I can take this tree color, I can uh, add some uh, white to it and then put some color back in it. And since this is the uh, this is the highlighted portion of the tree where it's down in here, I can just kind of test a few things and see uh, see how these are going to play against the uh, um, the values that are in the background here. So I'm just comparing these two. That's going to work pretty well there. Um, but the uh, shadow side of the tree is actually going to have to um, uh, get even darker. So I can actually take some of this. Uh, Blizzard and Crimson, and uh, I can just grab some of that. So once this is in here, you can see now I've got that kind of that counter change going. I've got the light, darker part of the tree will be sort of against this lighter part here. And I'm not really uh, not ready to work on the, the trees specifically. I just wanted to get some upper branches in so I, uh, so I know where I'm going. Um, and I don't want to get too much detail in this barn. Uh, this this tree, if it was around Michigan, it would probably be a, a a walnut because it's it was it's so straight. It's just got a few curves in it. Um, uh, let's see here. As we get uh, uh, closer to sky um, we don't have as much light coming uh, behind the tree here that become the, br the branches and, and uh, trunks and stuff become a lot more silhouetted as they get further up because you're basically looking at them with a very bright sky behind them so um, we'll be thinking about that a little bit later too as we move through that part uh, that part of the painting um, but right now we're just going for these big shapes uh, all right, let's move on to that. And so I'm just going to go right off the canvas, but we'll deal with this big vertical um, as we move along and figure out how to how to handle it. Um, okay, and then we have. Uh, We've got one more. Uh, can you believe it's been 34 minutes? I mean, this uh, this is the most amazing thing because this hour this hour flies by so fast. Um, and uh, 
uh, Larry says, uh, oh, hey, uh, first of all, I'll say hi to Deb, uh, Deb McDonald. Deb, you can see I got this, uh, I got this worked out. It actually, uh, it's actually working really well once I got used to not going down here for the paint and going up here. Um, Larry says, I was thinking the same. Uh, I found the colors. Uh, whoops, I lost your chat there. Here we go. Um, I uh, found the colors are totally different in natural light and I tend to paint uh, different in artificial. Um, that's that's actually really true. Um, you know, who knows what this will look like if I take it outside. I'm sure it'll be quite a bit different. Now, I am trying to use a uh, daylight um, s spectrum bulb to assist with that. But, you know, it's never it's never 100%. So... Um, all right, so let's get this uh, let's get this tree over here in, and then I think we can move on and uh, start to define. Uh, we'll we'll start to work. Uh, again, this is uh, something that uh, something that I do at this part of the painting as well. In this midpoint, is uh, I kind of kind of make a decision as to at what point in the process am I going to start working from from the background to the foreground and. You know that mid that mid part of the painting is where that really starts to happen, and um, and so that's why I want to get to the sky as quick as I can, um, so that we can start working our way our way forward, and then we'll we'll end the painting basically with. Uh, I'm thinking a few things, and I'll I'll try and remember to tell you these things as I go along. Um, I'm trying to paint thinner to uh, thicker in the foreground, so I'm thinking about that, and that so that also helps as we're moving uh, as we're moving forward. And um, uh, lately, I think I've made a few mistakes where I've I've gotten too much texture in some of the background elements, and it tends to want to override um, either my focal area or the uh, foreground where it should have the highest degree of texture. Um, yeah, I just played my palette. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, it's, uh, I'm, I'm really glad, uh, uh, that you suggested this, Deb. It's, uh, I think it's going to work out really good for us. So, so this, uh, this tree is, it's kind of similar to the other ones. Uh, it's just that it branches out over here. Uh, it's not quite as big as this one. And, and so I'm just going to keep it that way. And again, I was careful not to to get too close to the edge with it. I may have gotten a little bit closer than I really wanted to, but um, I think we're gonna be okay as long as I don't let it creep uh, let it creep over there. Um, if you caught uh, what I did right there, I just, uh, you know, sometimes you get a, a branch that tried to grow that didn't, didn't take uh, or was cut off at some point or broken. And, uh, Windstorm or something like that. So there's a little bump right here in the tree. So, and since this one's kind of in the background, um, I'm just letting these edges go. I mean, I'm not really working too hard to make any any hard edges because uh, this tree is not as important as this one um, here. So um, if there are harder edges, this is pretty close to us, and this is actually more back toward the the back part of the barn. So. And uh, we'll get these bushes here in a second. But, uh, let me get some of these in here. Uh -huh. And you you want uh, you want these uh, um, you know if these, if the trees are to look tall, um, you want you want them to just go ahead and run right off the canvas uh, um, because I can only see uh, so much of it. You know, if I tried to, um, a mistake that, that's made often when you're first learning to do this, and I was uh, not exempt from it for sure, is we tend to uh, try and keep things like this within the frame that we're working on, when really if we want these trees to be look grandiose and big and old like they are. We just wanted to go right off the top here, because um, that's going to um, that's gonna help. So uh, this one, these are just kind of entwined over here, so they're just kind of going together. And, and again, I'm, I'm painting uh, just just these kind of primary branches, uh, nothing, uh, no secondaries or anything yet. We'll get to those. Those can come, those can come later. 
and uh, some of these are coming off the just want to indicate where these branches are going to be so uh, okay all right that's cool Now you heard me say a minute ago that the uh, the sky here is the is the lightest value, and um, and in this particular painting it almost doesn't hold true because of the way the light was, and this roof was actually picking up some highlights that the uh, um, I think I said in this painting, but in this photograph. Um, so let me set that brush aside for a second, and I'm going to go. I'm going to grab one that's uh, a little cleaner here. Uh, we'll take this one. So I'm going to scrape, uh, scrape a little bit of this off for now. Just make a little room. So we're going to start, uh, we'll just kind of start down in here and um, uh, by the horizon. So I'm just going to take some titanium white and and I'm going to take a little bit of uh, the, the uh, cobalt blue, just a little, not a lot. And then I'm actually going to uh, just touch the cad yellow and I'm going to add that in there and maybe just a little more blue. Uh, and I'm going for a greenish, a green tinted uh, blue, and that looks way too white. So uh, I'm just going to come back with just a little more color in that. Um, and I'm going to maybe I'm going to approach the danger zone. I'm going to actually pick up a little bit of iridium. Um, that could be a total disaster, but. Uh, I'm gonna go with this for now, this particular color anyway. We'll come back to it. And uh, these trees, uh, I thought about this later. I actually want these to be falling down this hill. So uh, I'm gonna actually come in here and, and, and uh, take out some of this tree over here and then we can, uh, we can come back, come back over top of that. So I want to create more of a, a sense that this hill is falling away here more so than I have it very flat here, which doesn't really show us that that this uh, uh, this tree line back here is sitting up on a hill. So we're going to stair step it. We're going to actually come in and fall and come in and, and fall a little bit. And then this green will be this green will be gone. And um, so I'm just trying to get this uh, get this light value in here. Uh, just just for a starter um, and then we'll go from there and it's really going to help with uh, all right that uh, that got out of control in a hurry so I'm just going to work my way backwards Makes for a nice, uh, nice counter change right in here where this uh, sky is up against this dark uh, underside of that roof line right there. So I'm just going to lay that in. Just trying to fill some color. Uh, really, at this point, I'm getting the white in here, and then I'll come back over. Uh, uh, we'll say it's, it's a tinted white, but I'm, then we'll come back over it with uh, uh, more color as we go.
And uh, we don't want to create any strange tangents. So uh, when you end up in an area like this, um, what you want to do is make sure you carry uh, some of this color uh, through here um, in some form so that you don't stop right at this branch. So this, you're going to want to carry some color into uh, in between, however that works out. some brown there and so I just went back and uh, went back and took care of that and I'm gonna get a little more of this uh, cobalt here kind of got the same thing going over here uh, with a little bit of this uh, lighter color uh, just in here down into here just kind of these clouds are just kind of rolling kind of through this background um, this was in the mountains so And uh, now I know that the front side, uh, since we're directing the light from over here, the front side of, uh, of these are going to be picking up uh, some really light, uh, uh, some really light highlights with uh, maybe just a touch of warmth in them. Um, and so as you, this is only for reference at the moment, so I'm just putting some uh, Again, I'm just using the side of my brush and I'm just laying in some highlights where they might lay across these clouds. Um, and the intention is so that I can see um, that this is going to be uh, by far one of the lightest things in my, uh, in my painting. And so now, I don't know if you remember how light this looked before um, in the painting, but now it's act, and that's why I waited to define this because now you can see if my highlights on the clouds are that light, um, this is actually pretty close um, in uh, the value that it should be. And in my brain, I was going, well, this has got to be, this has got to be a lot lighter, but not as light as that. So, um, all right. So I'm gonna move on from there for a minute because I'm I'm trying to work my way around the uh, around the canvas here as much as I can without spending too much time in one area um, so so now I want to switch and I'm gonna do uh, something with these this tree line back here and it's uh, again it's it's right back to mixing a gray so I'm going to take the cat orange and I'm going to take the uh, uh, French ultramarine um, and this time I'm going to actually add just a little bit of lizard and crimson to that because of these, uh, these tree lines are in the distance and that's, uh, maybe not as, as red as it could be. The, uh, trees were, uh, just starting to bud out. So, um, and I'm just testing some different values of this and it's really not blue enough. So we're going to go with some more blue, um, in here. And then I'm going to put a little more lizard and crimson, and this is going to turn into more of a kind of a little bit of a red, violet, gray um, color. And its value is pretty light. So, but I don't want to get it like some of the 
areas that we're gonna have to adjust later are actually pretty chalky white right now, but, but that's okay. I just did this for reference, so we'll go back and adjust all that later. Um, which is it, you know, which is a good thing to think about in the in the mid part of a of a painting like this is you don't want to get too um, too locked in. So um, it's just it's just little adjustments here and there that you make along the way, um, keeping in mind what what's important to begin with. And the, that, my friends, is the uh, that's the hard stuff. Um, so let's test this back here. It's not too bad. Uh, I think maybe, maybe even just a little bit bluer, um, and then just a touch lighter will actually help push, push that a little bit more. So that looks pretty good there. So I, I push with the brush a lot when I'm doing these trees in the distance like this. So, and again, you might remember I just made that uh little kind of little hole in the uh, in the trees there because I wanted to I didn't like that we had a wall back here so and now we want this to step down a little bit because I'm going to create this uh, these trees are going to fall off at this kind of an angle so actually they're going to come all the way down into here and they're going to be up like that bit on this side then we're gonna pick up over here and we're gonna come up just a little bit more this way was going for there so I wanted more like this uh, so this will probably help a little bit I'm gonna just grab some of this uh, little blue in that um, I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna actually move this line down a little bit and I'm gonna come in at an angle adjust that as we go to let's get some of this out of here And then we'll do a quick test of, uh, kind of a quick test of this uh, grass color in here, and it's really going to be a lot of uh, a lot of cad uh, yellow, and I think we're going to probably use uh, ultramarine um, ultramarine blue in that. If we would have shifted uh, the other way and gone with the cobalt, we would have gotten this green, uh, which which is not as warm as a. Uh, as the other one, so uh, this, this particular cad yellow is like really pretty transparent. So, um, uh, and what I wanted to do here is I'm actually gonna I'm not gonna do what I was intending to do originally um, because I think it was pulling away from this story that this is actually up on this hill and this has to get out of here. Um, but, but I don't want to get too concerned about that at the moment. We got plenty of other things to, uh, plenty of other things to worry about. So, so uh, I'm gonna get a, kind of a the orange I was going for was not as uh, not as orange as it was turning out. So let's see what that looks like lightened slightly. That's a lot better actually.
and that was, might even be a little lighter, like right on the tops here. I'm just gonna get some dark in here because this whole area right here is quite dark. Almost where you can't tell the difference between the ground, the ground and the blue. So let's get some more blue in that. Okay, um, our um, our time is up. Uh, it's been uh, it's been an hour, which is uh, just I can't believe it. I mean, uh, hopefully, hopefully I covered enough uh, enough ground um, enough ground tonight where you get uh, you kind of get a sense of uh, a sense of where we're headed. Um, and, uh, it'll, we will, uh, we will pick up here where we, uh, where we left off. I won't mess with this, uh, anymore until, um, until the next time that we're together. And it's going to be kind of cool when we get up here because it was still early spring. So we'll, uh, there'll be some scumbling technique up here and, um, we've got a lot of work to do in this whole this whole foreground area. I think the main uh, structure of the barn is established now, so um, we'll be able to work over top of that. Uh, started getting a little fussy with what's going on in here, which is not uh, not uncommon for me. So um, anyway, um, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out with me tonight. Um, in um, another live feed so it's uh yeah we'll uh we'll pick it up next time and i'll catch you later Let's see who i missed here okay uh, before you go um uh let's see i was gonna say that uh i wanted to just check out the uh see if there was some things in the chat here. Uh, Deb said, I keep the scraped paint from my palette in two plastic containers, one for darks and one for uh, lights. I then use it to tone my next canvas. I hate wasting my paint. Wow, that's a really good, uh, that's a really good suggestion. You know, I don't know how many of those puddles of like sort of grays that I mix all together that I've uh, actually thrown out. So um, that's a really good suggestion. Um, all right, I'll see uh, what else we had here. What kind of light do you recommend? Uh, painterly brushes. I actually use a light um, that is, uh, um, uh, I believe it's 6,000 uh, K, which, uh, which is pretty close to daylight spectrum. So um, you can find uh, e either Either the bulb will say daylight on it, or uh, or it'll be something in the six thousand K range. So, um, and then uh, Deb had a comment, and then uh, her last recommendation. So, all right, um, thank you so much. I'll see you.